My fellow cyberpunks, what's up y'all? Your dude Sly here and welcome back to another Sly Nation cyberpunk news video. As you have no doubt seen by now, quite a lot has been happening over the past week. I ended up going on a camping trip, oh, camping and fishing trip with my dad and of course in an area where I get a zero phone signal, all of this news gets dropped, which is usually how that kind of thing works. But in any case, there was a media event in which the bigwigs on YouTube were able to get their hands on the game for a total of about four to five hours, which was strictly enforced and from what I've heard they were pretty much given free reign to do what they wanted within that small window there are a couple of videos up on YouTube in which you can easily find them and their associated gameplay but in addition to all the youtubers CD Projekt Red posted a new trailer called the gig and on top of that they introduced a new online series called Night City Wire and the first show episode 1 dropped a few days ago on June 26th. So in this video, y'all, let's go over the news we've learned from episode one. And in my next video, I'm gonna talk about the things I noticed from the various gameplay that the YouTubers posted. The new trailer, The Gig, is what's playing in the background right now, and it is absolutely worth watching on its own. So definitely check that out if you haven't yet. Also, something else worth mentioning, everything contained within this new trailer comes from the prologue only. Nothing comes from the quote unquote real game, only the introduction basically. So that's something to think about because when you watch this and then put it up against the other trailers that we've seen, you start to realize, and let me throw down a quick spoiler alert here just in case, everything we've seen so far, the whole Dex to Sean story, all the scenes with V and Jackie, it seems that 90% of them come from the prologue only. All except one gameplay video, which was part of a quest in the middle of the game. But in one of the earlier trailers, you see that Dex tries to take you out. But then in other shots, you seem to be doing business with him a lot. So I'm wondering if there were multiple outcomes and you either please him and get the job done, or y'all break ties and he tries to have you killed. But this shot right here seems to be the first time you actually see Johnny Silverhand. Now, I don't know this for sure, but that's the vibe I'm getting by the way he looks at you, looks at his hands, and then says fuck. Fuck. It also looks to be at that same hotel where Dex has you ambushed right out of the bathroom. So I'm beginning to think that the prologue is mostly what we've all been seeing. And it seems to be absolutely massive, almost just like a small storyline into itself. Of course, we'll find all of that out for ourselves here soon. And in my opinion, guys, the larger the prologue, the better. So the first thing we've learned from all of this recent news, the Badlands. Now I've spoken about the area outside of Night City in a few of my earlier news videos. We were given hints that it would be a decent size, that it even contained a huge lake and a dam where Night City gets its power from. But as it turns out, it's now the seventh district within Cyberpunk. Officially called the Badlands, it surrounds pretty much all of Night City and is home to a faction called Nomads. They're exactly as the name implies. Groups of wanderers that traverse the Badlands in convoys made up of RVs, trucks, old cars, motorcycles, all kinds of, you know, rigged and homemade items. They travel from place to place, striking deals and surviving. We now know that the Badlands is going to be absolutely massive, since Night City is based off of a real-world location. Think of the SoCal deserts outside the major cities. The Sonoran Desert is extremely flat in one area, then it kind of gets hilly after that. It's low-lying, full of small shrubs, creosote trees, cacti, and sand. Cyberpunk seems to emulate this perfectly. From what we've talked about in some of my older videos, we know that there'll be plenty of quests and reasons to go out and visit the Badlands. And if you look at this shot right here, you get a real sense of just how big it's going to be. Night City barely sticks out way back there in the distance. Now add in the fact that the Badlands pretty much wraps around most of the city, and you can imagine just how big it really is. From the small snippets we see in this trailer, I'm kind of getting like a Mad Max kind of vibe here. We'll see how it turns out, of course, in a few months. But next up, let's talk about another new gang or faction that will be central to your cyberpunk experience, the Mox, M-O-X. This gang has recently formed in 2076, after the death of an iconic person in cyberpunk lore, Elizabeth Borden, also known as Lizzie. She was an ex-sex worker who opened up her own strip club. Coming from a background in prostitution, she knows about the violence workers face while in the trade, and she was known to protect and defend guys and girls that were in the sex trade. The Mox will be a central gang you interact with regularly, and within you'll meet multiple NPCs. How you interact with these NPCs will ultimately show your overall relationship with the gang itself. The Mox seemed like a pretty cool gang, and with so many ears to the ground, I bet there's going to be all kinds of information to be learned and gleaned from them. 
so it seems to me they're going to be a pretty important part of the story. Moving on, let's talk about the first pretty much all machine human in the game. This creepy looking dude right here. Now we've met the Maelstrom gang in one of the earlier trailers and gameplays from last year. And the Maelstrom are all about upgrading the human body to the absolute max. But even this might be a little much. Turns out this NPC is a guy by the name of Adam Smasher. Now if you've watched my cyberpunk lore video, Adam Smasher is the guy who killed Johnny Silverhand back in one of the earlier tabletop campaigns and is pretty much permanently employed by the security branch of the Arasaka Corp. Discharged from the military for bad conduct, he worked his way as a mercenary doing job after job until one of them fell apart in a bad way and two rockets pretty much turned him into meatloaf. This is when Arasaka approached him, or what was left of him, and made him an offer of permanent employment and a metal shell of a body, or death. So, everyone knows what he chose. He chose the metal shell. Adam uses a battle frame called the Arasaka Dai Oni, a 1.1 ton metal combat frame that is leagues better than everything else out there. Basically, there is a human brain inside something called a biopod, and it's wired directly into the combat frame itself. Standing at almost 10 feet tall, it can run faster than most cars on the road, and it is an absolute true beast and incredibly complex. No one yet knows the role Adam Smashel will play within Cyberpunk, but given his history, ruthlessness, combat experience, and strength, I suspect it'll be something you're going to have to fight towards the end of the game. Alright, so moving on here, let's talk about next-gen consoles. Now, we already know that if you buy Cyberpunk 2077 on Xbox One, One S, or the X, the Xbox Smart Delivery System will transfer the game to you on the brand new beast of the Xbox Series X, of course, if you buy it. This has been known for some time. But, for the longest, no one really knew if PlayStation was going to play ball as well. Well, turns out, it will. No matter which console you own, PS4 or the Xbox One, if you purchase Cyberpunk on any current-gen console, you can expect it to move over to any next-gen console, the Xbox Series X or the PlayStation 5. Now, just to be clear, you have to be moving over to the same system. You cannot buy the game on, say, the Xbox One, and then move over to the PlayStation 5 and transfer the game. That's just not going to work. It will have to be the same brand. But either way, this is a big deal, a big win for gamers. Previous generations would have made you buy the game twice, which I absolutely hated. Like Destiny, I had to buy the game again, moving from the Xbox 360 over to the Xbox One. So it's great that these new delivery systems are geared towards gamers' needs. Next up guys, let's talk about something pretty freaking awesome. CD Projekt Red has been working on a secret project for the past few years called Cyberpunk Edge Runners. Made in collaboration with a Japanese studio called Trigger and coming to Netflix, Cyberpunk Edge Runners will be an anime-like series telling a completely different story arc with all new characters set in the Cyberpunk universe. It will still be set within Night City, but this adult-themed anime series is created in Tokyo, Japan within a district called Nakano. Now, if you're an anime buff, then you've probably heard of Nakano, as it is pretty much the anime capital of the world. Cyberpunk Edge Runners isn't due out till next year in 2022, and while I'm not much of an anime person, this is something I might have to check out. Alright ladies and gents, next up, let's talk about a recently revealed game mode within Cyberpunk 2077 called Brain Dance. Now at first, I thought this reveal was going to be the multiplayer DLC that CD Projekt Red was working on, but as it turns out, it's nothing even close. Brain Dance is a mode inside Cyberpunk that allows you to do all kinds of different things. Brain Dance, or BDs, is a way to relive a person's memories, actions, feelings, emotions, I mean the works. While the person is doing a certain act, like robbing a store, a chip inside the person's brain doing the robbing records everything about the situation. I mean the body's chemical levels, the sights of the user, the sounds it hears, wireless signals in the area, I mean the people, the thing you touch, I mean absolutely everything. You can take that recording and then relive a moment as if you were the one doing it. Now, on the lore side of things within the world of cyberpunk, Brain Dance was invented in the early 2000s at University of California, Santa Cruz. Now, remember, Night City is a fictional city within California, but based on a relocation. This invention was used to record positive experiences and then replay them in a therapy setting, letting users relive these experiences as if it were actually happening to them. It was used heavily in psychological therapy as well as state institutions like prisoner rehabilitation. But by the time 2077 comes around, the technology has grown by leaps and bounds. You can relive the experiences of anybody 
completely by hooking up to a machine which will recreate all the sights, the sounds, the smells, the feeling, the touch, adrenaline, hormones, dopamine, I mean everything, the works. Instead of just virtually reliving the experience like the earlier tech, the technology in 2077 basically makes the brain think you are actually living it. The only way you know you did not is when you unplug from the machine. Now there's a huge underground market for BDs and cyberpunk since you can feel everything happening to you as if you were the one doing it. So you can get some pretty crazy experiences. It has a booming adult film or sex market, but one dirty side to it, the illegal side to it, is experiences of dying or death. People can experience dying without actually, you know, dying themselves. So like you see here in the trailer, the gang sets this guy up to rob a store and then gets killed at the end. So the user experiences a huge adrenaline rush robbing the store and then they experience death. This is then sold as a complete package or a complete experience on the black market. Kind of has like a total recall vibe to it. However, in the game, V uses it for information. Since you can relive the scene, the chip records everything, you can scan faces within the room, read computers, look at security cameras, even intercept signals that were recording during that time. You can virtually search you know, the entire area top to bottom for information. As you see here in the trailer, you find out who the person is, the victims, where he is, who the, all of the victims are, the various conversations going on, and even what the machine is doing within the room. Now, I'm not sure how you acquire all of these chips to be able to brain dance, but it does seem like a cool mode to explore. It would be really neat if they had like a VR add-on for something like that. But who knows, maybe that'll get added at a later date. Alright, ladies and gents, and the last thing to note within this video, NPC design. Now, we know Cyberpunk is going to be dense, like thick story, tons of character development, lore about the region, I mean companies, history, wars, the works, but I didn't realize how serious CD Projekt Red was when they were making their characters. According to Pavel Sasko and Patrick Mills, lead quest designers, the team at CD Projekt Red actually wanted to make quests fit their characters to a very high degree. Now, Cyberpunk is, of course, someone else's IP, and it's been around since the late 80s and early 90s, so most of the main characters have quite the history and backstory. But CDPR went so far that they started writing childhood histories. They wanted their character development to have substance. The reason why this guy or girl is like this is because, you know, this and that happened to them early on in their life. And they use that history to not only build the person in the game, but quests around them to sort of let their history shine. And that, my friends, is freaking dedication to your craft, that you actually write someone's childhood history and you never even use it. It's just there as like, you know, something to help you create the person in the story. With so many characters in this game, it has to be so confusing to put all of this down and I create stories for every single NPC. But I suppose that's why CDPR makes such great games. Like, you know, at times that obsessive dedication to strive to make the best RPG possible. You know, it probably doesn't mean that much, but I just wanted to highlight the lengths some of these devs have gone, along with the guidance of Mike Pondsmith and his team to really bring out the characters of Cyberpunk 2077. And yeah, that's about it guys. Episode 2 of Night City Wire will be out in quote unquote a few weeks time whenever that'll be. So be sure to keep those alerts on as I'll be breaking down any new information as it arrives. But for now guys, that's really about it. Thank you all so much for watching and for supporting Sly Nation. I'll have a breakdown video of all the recent gameplay that's been released throughout the various sources. So definitely be on the lookout for that as I'm almost finished and I'll have it up in a few days time. If you're new to my channel, then welcome my friend, I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope that you stick around for whatever comes next. Please feel free to spank the thumbs up or down if you liked, loved, or hated the video, and if you wish to get in touch, business or otherwise, hit me up at SlyNationGaming67 at gmail.com, or preferably over on social media, at SlyNation on Twitter, SlyNationGaming on the FB. Take care y'all, and keep those eyes open for more cyberpunk news and gameplay breakdown vids coming out here soon, but until then, this is your dude Sly. And I'll catch you all next time.